make our way out of this Chichester uh, State Forest, this part of it, the Mount Allen one and the Ladies Well. I think we've sort of seen most of the good things out here. We checked out that Mount Allen, the Ladies Well, and this creek that runs along here. We did those four wheel drive tracks. We're going to head out of here over into the other Chichester State Forest now which is on the other side of Chichester Dam. It's, I don't really know how far it is, maybe about now. I'm glad we camped up on top of that mountain last night to ourselves because all these river camp sites, being school holidays, they're quite busy. There's a lot of people down here. We took advantage of this little water crossing here to clean out some mud from the day's driving. We're on this road out of that Chichester State Forest now and that lady as well. And look at all the shoes. How many shoes do you reckon they are, Kai? 10,001 plus this one. Plus that one. Which is Why 10, does everyone put their shoes here? Well, look at them all in the tree as well. I've, have you ever seen anything like this before, Kai? Yeah. Where? See them all up in the tree there too. We just stopped at this Chichester Dam, have a bit of lunch, check it out. It's a pretty cool spot here. This huge dam supplies the water to the area. We're gonna go walk out, walk out the dam wall, and then we'll head out into the bush. Um, imagine getting some of the water and then you had a fish in it. Do you know how much water's in this dam, Kai? 5,000 million gallons. Greatest depth of water, After we had some lunch and look around Chichester Dam, we headed into the Telgiri River section of the Chichester State Forest to do some four wheel driving and find a camp for the night. Just arrived in this other Chichester State Forest. We're heading in the main road and then basically we're just taking side tracks off and see what we can see. If I see a turn, I'll sort of check it on the VMS, see where it goes. If it goes roughly where we want to go, we'll poke our noses down it and see what we can find. The old Chichester Logging Museum. The Chichester Logging Museum is an awesome bit of history you can check out from the old logging days back in the area. Some of the machinery they used to use and the methods are amazing. After checking out the logging museum, we continued further into the forest to try and find ourselves a camp for the night. 
We checked out the Telegiri River campsite first, but there was already a few people there. If you continue through the campground, you can get through to the Karawan campground. Now the Karawan campground is the only one in this area that's four-wheel drive access only, just because you need to get across this little river crossing to make it to the campsite. Dad accidentally still had his car in two-wheel drive, hence why he had that wheel spin when he was coming across. I actually recovered a two-wheel drive Lancer from this creek crossing a couple of years ago. He tried to drive across it and just come to a spinning stop out in the middle. First arrived at the Karawan Campground in the Chickchester State Forest. The Karawan Campground is the only one that's four-wheel drive access just because you've got to get back across that um, gravel river crossing back there. All the others, you got Frying Pan Creek, Telegiri, Coachwood. I think all the other three main ones are two-wheel drive access. And then this, there's no one here, probably because it is four-wheel drive access. There's a few people back at the Telegiri one on the way in here. But someone's left a heap of wood here and a fire going, so we might just claim this as our spot tonight. Dad's going to head home tonight, just Kai and I are going to stay another night. Um, it's only 3.15 now, so I think we might go, maybe there's a couple of tracks nearby I know, maybe go try them and sort of guide Dad out of here and then Kai and I will come back here and camp. We started heading back out towards the main road and took one of the side tracks that we'd spotted on the way in. There's plenty of four-wheel drive tracks in this area. Most of them just run off the main forest roads. So they're not too hard to find. Yeah, this ugly old one here. That's the that's the track around. It's got sprayed with mud. We've started this track, but we're thinking we might turn around. This hill here is probably going to be a bit too much for our cars. It's getting late in the day. It's already 3:30, 3:45. Dad's got a two and a half hour drive home from here. We don't really want to spend hours on this hill. So the temptation is too great. You're going to give her a nudge, buddy. In the end, I couldn't help myself and I had to have a crack trying to get up to the top of the hill. The holes on the hill were too big and in the worst possible spots. I really don't think you'd be able to get to the top without lockers. So we turned around and headed back towards camp for the night. Dad's gone home, come back to this car on campsite, you know, set up for the night. Hey, my bird, what's up? up camp at that Karawan camp. We're just heading to explore this area a little bit today. All these side tracks around these main camps 
on the Telgiri River, you know, around that Frying Pan Creek, Karawong, Coachwood. There's heaps of side tracks. It's pretty like, gets a fair bit of four wheel drive use in this area. So there is quite a few side tracks around here. You can explore, have a bit of fun. 95% chance of heavy showers all day today, but we haven't seen any rain yet, but it is cloudy. We'll keep an eye on the weather because a lot of these tracks are that red clay. So if it starts raining, uh, we'll probably not want to be heading down them. It just gets so slippery. Check most of the mud holes on these tracks. They look like they might be a little bit deeper. The stick wasn't really working for me on this one, so I thought I'd just jump in, have a look. Nice. Won't be wearing those boots today. A lot of the time through these mud holes and ruts, you can pick a high line through the centre and then either side. Makes it a whole lot easier and you're not just going through all the mud and straight up the ruts. And those ruts are pretty deep, I think I'd be diffed out. We are starting to get a few spots now, so I have to keep an eye on it. This track in the wet, I don't think you'd be able to do what I'm doing these high lines. You'd be just slipping in and then you'd be just full speed trying to get up them. Once again, you do need to be a little bit careful straddling the ruts and picking those high lines because if you do slip in and get yourself on an awkward angle, it can make things worse for you. And I have seen vehicles rolled from people slipping in the ruts on steep hills. Such a great area down here, like you're just fully in the jungle, in the middle of nowhere, no one around, these beautiful creeks, tracks sort of all around this area. That looks like an old bridge there from a long time ago. This is a big hill, this one. Came to this hill last time we came out here, but it was wet, raining. We decided no, it's uh, too slippery in the wet. But let's see how we go, it's reasonably it's a little bit sticky, but not wet. It's just not fully dry, but that's probably even better. After you make your way down into that valley and little river crossing, you got this huge hill climb all the way back up out. But it is in reasonable condition, so it's nothing too extreme. At that moment he knew there was nothing coming to destroy him. That moment he heard something over there. He holded and he waited patiently and he heard
All these handheld shots here are filmed by Kai on the new GoPro 7. And it seemed to be the first GoPro where you can actually use it and get some really good sound and smooth footage out of it. Really happy with it to use as a second backup camera. I'm in first gear low range, all the way up this hill, just trying to hold that throttle nice and steady. How's your new life being a filmer? After we came off that track, we followed the main road up into the mountain range and turned onto Karua River Road. This is the back way, takes you all the way up to the top of Mount Berico. Fun little drive, nothing hard. You pretty much do it in two wheel drive. It doesn't get a whole heap of use, so it is quite overgrown in places as you can see. Having sunny days when you're out camping is always a good thing, but some of these cloudy, rainy days can truly create some magnificent sights. Driving through the clouds up on top of that Mount Berico is amazing. This is Mount Berico, they're at the top of now. It's pretty high up, we're kind of in the clouds up here. We basically did a big loop after we came out of those, those few tracks this morning. We headed out to the mountains and then we took Karua River Road. It does a big loop around the back and then comes in the backside of Mount Berico. It's a good, it's a pretty good drive through there. It's a little bit overgrown, but it was all open and easy going. There's heaps of motorbike tracks through all this, so you get so much motorbike use through it. Off all these roads, you just motorbike tracks everywhere. This morning we left our camp down here at this Karawong camp, and then these few tracks we did were kind of in this area here. And then we came up this road, and we took this back way, this Karua River Road, out along the edge of the ridgeline all the way, and this is where we are here, up now at that Mount Berico. And then I think we're gonna come back down this way, and maybe out through here. We're going to relax up here for a little bit and then head back down off Mount Berico the other way. Well, we'd only seen a few spots for most of the day. The rain was starting to get heavier by this point. We're trying to make our way back out of this Chickchester State Forest. Back out. We're heading out of here today, I think. This weather, we were thinking maybe staying another night. But the weather's going downhill. And we've, we've sort of seen like a fair bit of this area. Just going to head home. We're only at home two or three days and then we're heading off to the Blue Mountains for a week. So you get home and get everything cleaned up and sorted and ready for that trip again. We continued to navigate our way out through the bush, out through that track. It was all pretty easy going. There was this one section here where this bridge was a little bit worn out, had collapsed on the side. So a little bit of tight navigating, but all good. People had still been driving across it. There was a well-worn track. I checked it right out. One last creek crossing. Now we're back on the main road, head home.
that last way we came out of, after the Berico Tower up there, we came down here and then we took this mountain road. After that, it wasn't too far and we were out of the bush here. And then we come out here all the way out and now we've just hit the main road between Gloucester and Dungog. This weather's only going downhill, so I'm glad we didn't stay another night. It's getting pretty wet now. Air up the tyres and make the trip home. <laughs> 